Graphene is the ultra-thin form of carbon discovered at the University of Manchester in 2004. It's often dubbed the wonder material on account of its incredible properties. Properties that promise great applications and flexible electronics due to optics. I've come along to the lab here in Manchester to learn more about this incredible material. So what we do is we take some graphite and we place it on some, on some tape, sticky tape. Just, just standard. Yeah, you can use standard tape. scotch tape if you want. Yeah. Um, but we have a, a tape here which doesn't have as much residue mm -hmm. for our, property, our, our purposes as, as scotch tape. Um, so then you just press the, the graphite like this. It's quite squishy, isn't it? Yeah. Press the graphite yeah. on, the, on the tape. Um, and then you can take an impression mm -hmm. like this. So when, when you press the tape together, you're basically yeah. removing a few layers. Okay, so it's so if you look there, oh, so it's tearing it off. And yeah, so we it seems have to be quite. It's different in different places, isn't it? It's not an even layer. It's no, it comes off in terraces. Yeah. So we just remove the excess graphite like this, and at the moment it's it's quite thick, mm -hmm. right? This is still a graphite. You can still see it with your with the naked eye. Yeah. Um, what we have to do is then make it a little bit thinner. So we would then press again. So just repeat exactly. Just repeat the same exactly. And cleave like this. And so each time you do that, you're making the, the graphite pieces thinner yeah. and thinner and thinner. Um, so we just do it a couple more times until we get a nice coverage. Mm -hmm. What we then do is we have a piece of silicon. Okay. So we just put the tape on the silicon like this. Give it a nice firm mm -hmm. press. Um, and what's important is you need, you need the silicon to be really clean. So the silicon's not clean, the, graph, the graphene mm. won't stick. So how, how would you do that? How would you ensure it was clean? Um, we clean it in solvents, yeah. um, acetone, IPA. Yeah. Um, and then um, as soon as we have it nice and clean, we then press the graphite onto it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have a chance for any sort of hydrocarbons or water yeah. to get on the surface. Is that why we're wearing all this gear as well? Yeah, exactly. Keep the dirt keep out. Your hand, yeah, because yeah. yeah, your fingers are quite, quite oily. And yeah. yeah. Um, so once we press the flakes onto the surface, we then just grab the edge of the tape. And the trick is to actually remove the tape quite slowly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a nice. So this if, you, if you do it too quickly, then what would happen? You don't the the layers don't cleave that well, right? And so, so by cleaving, you, you mean just separating? Yeah, se separating. Yeah, the planes, exactly. Or? Yeah, separating the planes. So yeah. when you when you separate the planes nice and slowly. Yeah. You get a higher chance of leaving some graphene mm. um, on the surface. Okay. So you just slowly remove the tape like that. Okay, I see. And you can't really see it with the naked eye, um, just like that. Um, so what we would then do is then transfer the sample to a microscope, mm -hmm. um, where we can have a closer look and inspect the surface. So Branson's hopefully stripped a bit of graphene from the graphite. So I'm now here with Aravind and his microscope to see if that's true. Hey, um, so one of the nice things about graphene is that even though it's a two-dimensional material, mm. it's the thinnest material in the world, you don't need an electron microscope or something like that to see it. You can actually see it in the optical microscope. The trick is that you have to select the correct type of substrate, mm -hmm. and the correct wavelength of light you match the substrate with the wavelength of light, so in this case we use um, 300 nanometers of silicon dioxide on top of silicon surface. Yeah. If you use a substrate like that, which is what Branson put the tape down on, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll give you the correct contrast that you need to actually be able to see graphene even though it's such a thin material. Um, so what's causing these um, speckly colored bits here on, on, on the blue? Oh yeah, so um, when the flakes get fairly thin, there's, um, there's always um, some air or solvent or something like that which is um, trapped underneath the flakes and it, it causes bubbles because it's, yeah. if it, if it, it's like a very thin fabric so if it's on the surface there's all, there might be something trapped underneath. So is that unavoidable? You you, you always have yeah, usually yeah. We, we do end up having a, a, mm -hmm. a few of those on, on the sample so it's just bubbles on, on the which are, uh, which are trapped underneath. Yeah. But as you start going to thinner and thinner layers you see that it starts turning um, different shades of blue but what we actually need to find are the very, very, very thin sheets. And when it becomes less than 10 layers, you go from blue to shades of purple. Mm -hmm. um, the, the purple 
sort of yellowish purple you see in the background, that's the substrate. Okay. And the light purple bits or the dark purple bits you see here are all less than 10 layers. So you can see that there are some bits here which are very, very light uh, purple. So that's the thinnest That's section, the thinnest. Right? So actually with a bit of practice, you can just look at the screen and say, right, that's a single layer, that's a double layer. So obviously there's been a lot of talk over the last few years about graphene and it's been dubbed the wonder material because it's, you know, it's so great. Um, yeah, what, what is so special about it? Well, it's not just one thing. The nice thing about graphene is that it's got a whole range of properties which are all really great and all of them are occurring in the same material. So despite the fact that it's so thin, the thinnest material you can technically make, mm. it's also the strongest material as in if you try to rip it apart, it takes more force than anything else to rip it apart. But it's also, since it's so thin, it's very light. Um, it's mostly transparent, it's about 97% transparent to light. But another way of looking at it is, despite being that, uh, that thin, it still absorbs 3%. So depending on what your application is, you can look at it one way or the other. Mm. It also has uh, the fastest electron and hole mobility. So electrons and holes can move through graphene faster than um, any to any other material. Mm. In fact, the electrons in graphene behave as if they're particles of light. So they don't, um, they don't get scattered. If your electrons are moving through any other material, then the atoms and um, things in the, in the material itself will scatter the electrons around and it's not very conducting for that reason. Mm. But graphene is the best conductor of electricity and heat because these electrons can zip through the graphene um, as if they are particles of light, so they're not affected by anything else. Ah. And um, So it's got all of these amazing properties sort of rolled into one material. So you, so you mentioned the, the mechanics and the electronics and the optics. I mean, what kind of applications are being developed or at least yeah, what, what kind of ideas are being put forward for applications? Well, um, the nice thing about graphene is in, in about, what, six years, or seven years since it's mm. been around, um, people have already started making prototype devices um, and applications in various fields. For example, there's a lot of interest because it's flexible, transparent, conducting. Um, you can actually think of making displays with uh, graphene to replace indium tin oxide. Mm. The advantage being that uh, it's a flexible material. So you can actually think of making flexible um, touch screens or flexible electronics with, with graphene. IBM is very interested in using graphene for sort of the next generation of computer chips. So they're working on uh, graphene transistors for mm -hmm. computer applications. So, so could, could they be uh, faster and superior to silicon? Yeah, they've demonstrated uh, graphene transistors running at 100, and 100 to 150 gigahertz or something like that. And there are other advantages as well in terms of power consumption and um, you know heat generation and things mm. like that as well. I mean, do, you, do you think these applications are they way off, you know, decades off, or are we getting closer um, now? We're getting closer, but I wouldn't expect something to pop up in the market within the next two or three years. I would I would think more like five years of onward. Things like flexible displays might be in the market in five years. Um, electronics um, like computer chips made of graphene probably ten to twenty years. Twenty years more more likely. Great. Oh, thank you. Well, thanks. thanks.